Well, we move on to key number six for spiritual wellness, and that is seeking beauty. You know, Gandhi said that, when I admire the wonders of a sunset or the beauty of the moon, my soul expands in the worship of the Creator. Spiritual wellness is about expanding the soul in a culture that often inhibits the soul's ability to stretch. And that brings us to our sixth question to reflect on, and that is, what is your dream vacation spot? You know, we human beings crave beauty. In fact, when we think of going on vacation, we tend to think of places where we will encounter that beauty. In fact, before we go any further, I thought uh, it would be good to check in with you again. Let's just get a quick idea of what kind of spot you consider to be a, a dream vacation spot. And so we're going to have another poll question right now and quickly get an idea of uh, just where it is that you consider to be the dream vacation spot. So, Nick, let me turn it back to you to explain to people about how to answer this poll. All right. Thank you, Joe. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, you should see a box open on your screen. It says polling at the top. And in there, you'll see the question, what is your dream vacation spot? Please select A if it's Mexico, Central, or South America. B if your dream vacation is in the Caribbean. C if it's in Hawaii or the South Pacific. Please select D if your dream vacation is in the continental U.S., Please select E if it's Europe, F for Asia, G for Africa. Finally, please select H if your dream vacation is in Australia. Okay. Thank you, Nick. I can tell you that for me and my wife, it was Hawaii just this past summer where I had our dream vacation of a lifetime. How about for you, Nick? What's the dream vacation spot? It would be Europe. I've, uh, I'd love to go back to Italy again or, or go to Ireland again. Both of them are just, just amazing places. Great. Thanks, Nick. And thank you to all of you for responding, and Nick is going to tabulate those. But while he's doing that, uh, I just thought I'd mention that, you know, when you think about it, whatever your choice, chances are it has something to do with beauty. We are simply people who are drawn to beauty, and when vacation time rolls around, we seek to refresh our, our bodies and minds and souls by encountering that beauty. So Nick is going to tell us uh, some of the favorite vacation spots that you folks are looking for in terms of searching for beauty. Nick? All right, Joe, it looks like uh, your dream vacation is the most popular with the group there with Hawaii or the South Pacific, followed by Europe and the Caribbean. And, again, we did, uh, we did cover everything. The, U the continental U.S. scored uh, surprisingly high, but uh, we, we covered all the options tonight. Okay, how nice. One person uh, commented that home is their uh, dream spot for vacation. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, and I believe that's true. We're all looking for beauty. We need beauty just as much as we need proper nu nutrition in, in our diet. And spiritual wellness requires a, a steady diet of beauty. Uh, and so, with that in mind, let's continue talking about how we seek beauty. And most of the time, as we uh, humans can only observe beauty from a distance. The problem that enters into our lives is when we try to possess beauty. Scripture provides us with an example of this in King David, who had an eye for beauty, but unfortunately his royal eye landed on the beauty of Bathsheba, the wife of, the, of Uriah, the Hittite, who was away in battle. Well, David sends for the woman, has sex with her, impregnates her, and then orders that Uriah be placed in the front lines of battle so that he will be killed, which is what happened. Talk about scandal. So all of that from trying to possess beauty. See, the idea is not the idea is not trying to, to seek beauty, but to possess it. Desire is not the problem. The problem is what we do with that desire. And the solution is not to squelch our desires. I'm not a big fan of what I call cold shower spirituality, an approach that tells us to just say no without giving us anything to say yes to. A healthy spirituality means neither repressing our desires nor impulsively surrendering to them. We need to do more than to just say no. We need to have something to say yes to, something greater. And that something greater is indeed beauty. This kind of beauty is found in intimacy, a true delving into the depths of mystery that is another person's heart and soul. Intimacy we need to remember intimacy is not to be equated with sexual activity. We can be intimate with any number of people and not have sex with them. 
So ultimately what we need to remember is that our desire for beauty is a desire to be intimate with God, who is the source of all beauty. The scripture is full of references to God's beauty. Uh, the, the aforementioned King David prayed in Psalm 27 about his desire to behold the beauty of the Lord. And throughout scripture we hear of the desire to see God face to face. Well, God's face refers to his presence, and to be in God's presence is an intensely beautiful experience. So beauty is the essence of God. We need to fall in love with God. You know, for Catholics, this notion of the beauty of God is the focus of our traditional practice of Eucharistic adoration as we uh, sit or kneel in total silence, just gazing at the consecrated host which is the body of Christ displayed in an ornately adorned vessel called a monstrance. We call it adoration because we simply are paying attention to the beauty of God, adoring the beauty of God. And that prayer of adoration invites us to reflect on those qualities that make God beautiful so that we can live as a reflection of that beauty. So we need to actively seek beauty. I'd like to offer just a few ways that we can do that. Uh, one, of course, is getting outside and interacting with God's beauty in nature. Uh, also, listening to the beauty of music, all kinds of music, not just classical music. Also, enjoying the, the visual arts, which expand the soul. And in fact, I encourage you to visit a very creative website uh, that is called Picturing God, com. It's a photo blog that seeks to use the visual to help us find the beauty of God in all things. You're reading good literature is another way to awaken, awaken the beauty of life. And finally, one that may surprise you, but someone had it in our uh, comments earlier about uh, running. They talked about running to maintain their spiritual health, and that is athleticism. You know, the experience of God and athleticism was really summed up beautifully in the, the movie um, Chariots of Fire, where the Olympic sprinter Eric Liddell explained, I believe God made me for a purpose, but he also made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. So if you're an athlete, or even an occasional athlete, someone like me, you know, the <laughs> weekend warrior, I pray that you also feel God's pleasure in your athletic endeavors. And if you enjoy watching sports as I do, don't just watch to see who wins and loses, but also watch for the beauty of the athleticism in any sport that you're watching. Now, of course, this is not an exhaustive list of ways that we can encounter beauty, but I encourage you to reflect on all the ways that you can consciously seek and encounter beauty in your life and commit yourself to recognizing this beauty as a reflection of God's beauty. And during this Easter season, we bask in the beauty of the resurrection. We sing... This is the day the Lord has made, and Lord, let your face shine upon us, and the Lord is my shepherd. All of these are images of beauty that refresh and restore our soul. And as an Easter people, let's allow the beauty of God to be reflected in our faces, in our words, and in our actions. 